you're in for a treat for this world premiere of our composer in residence's violin concerto. Please help me welcome to the stage our composer himself, Dylan Fixmer. My name is Dylan Fixmer, and it is my pleasure to tell you a story about an incredible woman named Terry. Terry Sternberg was a concert violinist. She played with the San Francisco Ballet and the Tanglewood Orchestra under the direction of a couple of people you may have heard of before, Leonard Bernstein and Aaron Copeland. She played with the Colorado Festival Orchestra and is credited in numerous recording projects ranging from classical to American folk and to new age music. She was an avid gardener and kayaker. She loved her cats and she loved her kitchen gadgets. From this description, one might imagine that Terry lived a beautiful and carefree life, but Terry's life was far from easy. She struggled, struggled with trauma from being abducted and sexually assaulted when she was attending college to study violin. She also lived through two car crashes, neither one her fault, one claiming the life of the other driver and both nearly ending hers. So after struggling for years with PTSD, which made it impossible for her to keep a job or maintain her home, Terry, like so many others during the housing crisis, became homeless in 2009. Her home was repossessed, and all her possessions were stolen or thrown away. She lived from shelter to shelter, finally resting for as long as she could until she had stayed her limit, finally ending out sleeping under the stars, as she poetically put it in the only published account of her life, a three-page memoir featured in a collection entitled, Until They Have Faces, telling the stories of the resilience of those without a home. But Terry was so much more than resilient. Even while she slept nights on park benches, she was a vocal and public advocate for the rights of those experiencing homelessness and she worked with her community to give a voice to those who are often rejected by society. Terry died in 2013 at the age of 60, still struggling with the terrors of PTSD. Terry's story has haunted me for years. The only reason I know of her is because I discovered a few years ago that my violin, the one you will see my brilliant and accomplished wife Sarah play this evening, was once Terry's. This violin, built by master Geigenmacher Paul Noor in 1919, was put on consignment in a music store in Boulder I worked at while I was attending college. Nothing was known about the violin when it was brought in, and it was in such poor condition that no one really bothered to ask. Yet something drew me to that instrument, like the magnetism that one feels standing in the presence of someone great, and I had to buy it. Years later, I noticed a hidden compartment in the case under the body of the instrument. 
There in the mess of used strings and dust was a receipt, a business card, and a festival flyer tying Terry to this violin. As I perused any information I could find on Terry, I was heartbroken by her story, but I was also inspired. Her mission was clear. She wanted to be an advocate for those without homes, and she wanted to help people understand homelessness. Homelessness, homeless people die younger than most. Their energy is worn down by everyday hardships, but also by sneering people whose unvoiced fear is probably that they too could become homeless. Almost anyone who owns something has a fear of losing it, and to hate or belittle someone who has lost everything is a great way of talking yourself into believing that it could never happen to you. Well, it did happen. It happened to me. became the basis for the melodies with which I wrote this violin concerto in memory of Terry. This piece is a meditation on the trauma of homelessness and the constant struggle for humanity those without homes face. Terry sought to give human decency back to those from whom it had been stripped, and not for being without a home, but for being shunned for it. Homelessness for Terry was not a personal issue. It was a societal wound that seemed to never heal. My hope is that this concerto, a conversation between one and the many, will help carry on Terry's message until they have faces. Until we can look out the car window at a woman holding a sign that says, anything helps, and see one who is needing to be loved and supported. Until we can look down the alley at a man asleep with a dog cradled under blankets of newspapers, and see one who is yearning to feel safe and self-assured. Until everyone experiencing homelessness is seen as a fellow human suffering, and then is provided the means and the path to one of the most basic of human rights, shelter until human decency, empathy, and the resolve to not turn away has prevailed, and no person is without a home, we must continue to find the kindness within ourselves to show love to those who have had their humanity stripped from them. This was Terry's hope. It is mine too. The piece you are about to hear was written to honor a great hero one whose words and actions inspired me to strive to make the world a better place. I can only hope that this story and this piece will inspire you to do the same.